Hello and welcome to NCTV episode 62, which is all about hay fever and what you can do to combat it. I know for many that this will be timely advice given that we are in the middle of June at the time of recording this and the pollen count has been particularly high over the last few weeks to the point of which uh, many people are actually at a loss as to what they can do about it. The first thing to know about hay fever is that there are three main types being tree pollen, grass pollen and weed pollen. Fortunately we are over the tree pollen phase now which occurs in the spring so if you had it badly then the chances are you know that tree pollen it was the culprit. Hay fever at the start of summer which is where we are now can be attributed to grass pollen and it's worth noting that this is what affects 80% of people who suffer from hay fever. If you get it badly in the autumn, then that would be down to weed pollen. There are a few reasons why it appears more people are seemingly suffering from it this year, but this is not necessarily down to the pollen being any worse than usual. Firstly, with it still being in COVID times, a lot of allergy sufferer, sufferers appointments, as with many other medical needs, they've, they've had to delay or postpone them. People's perception of the symptoms can also be far worse when you spend so much time indoors, locked down or isolating. Another reason, up until the last few days at least, we were experiencing a combination of warm temperatures with gentle winds, which are the perfect conditions for spreading of pollen. So if you're one of the one in five people who experience hay fever at some point in your life, then you'll know you have it because your symptoms will include sneezing, a runny nose, itchy eyes, headache, shortness of breath and itchiness. This tends to affect people more who have a family history of allergies such as asthma or eczema. Effectively what happens with hay fever is that in the pollinating season this fine powder is released from plants which upon contact with our eyes, nose, throat and sinuses causes irritation, swelling and inflammation at those sites. Sinuses, by the way, are small air-filled cavities behind your cheekbones and forehead. If you do suffer from hay fever, the good news is that symptoms tend to improve as you get older, which may not be of much consolation for you if you do have it badly right now. However, whilst there's no cure for hay fever, there are some things that you can do to relieve the symptoms. And these are starting off with some preventative health tips. Number one, wear a hat and wrap around sunglasses to protect your eyes from the pollen when outdoors. Two, take a shower and change your clothes after being outdoors to remove the pollen from your body. Three, stay inside and close your windows and doors when the pollen count is particularly high. Four, Apply a small amount of Vaseline to the uh, nose openings to trap the pollen. Five, avoid hanging your washing outside, again when the pollen count is high, as your clothes will get covered in it. Six, vacuum and dust regularly. Seven, wash your pet's fur when they come in from outside, or just keep them outside for as long as possible. Whilst hay fever doesn't pose a serious threat to health, when severe, it can greatly affect a person's quality of life, disrupting their productivity at school or work. It can also lead to sinusitis or a middle ear infection in children. If you do find that you need a bit of extra help from the GP or pharmacy, then the likes of over-the-counter medications, corticosteroids, immunotherapy, uh, that type of thing will usually be advised. When it comes to antihistamines in the form of tablets, solutions, nasal sprays or eye drops, then the more modern non-sedating type would be advisable, for example citrazine, loratadine and uh, fexofenadine. A popular non-drug intervention involves washing out of the nose with a saline solution, which is also obtainable at the pharmacy. And many people also find hay fever or allergy wipes to be useful. One last thing to mention, despite this being a popular option, there is unfortunately no scientific evidence that consuming a spoon of locally sourced honey a day can help. This because 
bees uh, get their pollen from flowers to make their honey, as opposed to trees, grass or weeds, um, the pollen of which doesn't end up in the honey being consumed by us to help with the immunity. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't uh, help support your local economy and the bee population if you still fancy sampling the sweet, uh, this form of sweet tasty treat. Finally, if you or anyone you know do happen to be suffering with their sinuses as a result of hay fever, then be sure to check out an earlier NCTV on the matter, episode 12 to be precise, where you can find some great self-help facial massage and drainage techniques to help. That's all for today, and I'll see you next time for some more bite-sized bits to help your health flourish. Bye-bye for now.